So we talk about how the ionosphere uh, come into play and why we need to know about the ionosphere. So we start with uh, an event occurred in, in Canada in August 2003. Um, what happened that suddenly all the lights of Canada, they gone off uh, without any reason. Uh, not only the lights gone off, but also the ships lose their uh, direction, the plane lose their direction on the day uh, that occurred. And also the GPS, which we use for our car navigation, it also lost the direction. So nobody know where to go. Suddenly all the GPS is off. And we, see, we start seeing the lights, different colors of light in the, in the atmosphere, in, in, the, in the sky, which are of blue, blue, green, yellow, different colors of light suddenly start appearing in the sky. So people start talking about, is it an earthquake? Or is it some kind of storm? or some kind of hurricane or some alien attack on the Canada. But in fact, uh, it was the sun who was making these changes, sudden changes are so, so severe that all, the, all this happening in, the, in, a, in a few hours' time in Canada. What is actually happening? In, in order to understand how, how sun did it, we try to understand what is actually sun, in fact. So we go into deep in the sun and try to understand what is actually the sun from inside. If we divide the sun, uh, if we try to understand the sun, we, we try to understand a pot on the stove which is cooking spaghetti. Different parts of the sun can be, uh, can be compared in this way. That for example, the, the, the cooker that is cooking the spaghetti, it is the deep inside the core of the sun. In between, we have the water that is, that is used to cook the spaghetti that we can call the radiative zone where the, all the heat is, uh, is, is uh, generated and giving off the spaghetti to cook. And at last, we have two, two outer layers that is actually cooking the spaghetti, and sometimes we see the spaghetti is coming out from the water surface. So this spaghetti uh, is actually what we have uh, those black spots in the previous picture I've shown. So how these black spots are occurring on the surface of the sun is actually sun is giving off the magnetic field coming out of those black spots and giving, off, giving us extra plasma that is ejected towards the, the earth. With, with these uh, lines of forces, of magnetic forces, sun used to eject plasma towards different planets. So it, Earth is a planet, so it, it ejects the plasma. If it is towards the Earth, we, we receive this plasma, and these, these, uh, these make changes in our atmosphere or ionosphere of the Earth. Once the plasma is, is ejected into the space, what is left on the surface of the sun are these black spots. In order to understand the space weather in its cast, we used to count how many black spots are there. It means those numbers of, uh, so this can tell us how, what is the intensity of the sun activity that is coming out towards us. The more black spots, the more angry the sun will be. It, the, these are not only black, but if we look into different lights, different wavelengths, we see different activity on the similar position. So for example, in one light, they, are, they look black. In another light, they look more bright, and in another light, uh, in another light, in another wavelength, they, they show different activity going on on the sun. This can also tell us what is the temperature of different places on the sun at different time. So, for example, in in this ultraviolet uh, light, we can see the, the atmosphere of the sun, which is not visible in this uh, another wavelength. So, in fact, we, uh, we 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 think that sun has one color only, but in our science, how we start uh, reading the sun. Sun has many colors. All these are the real pictures of the sun that ten, tell us different information about what is going on on the sun. Well, we talked about this picture, which is the magnetic line of forces, which is the illustrative part. So in fact, on the surface of the sun, there are these loops coming out from the surface and, and ejecting the plasma towards the Earth and other different planets. If you look at a real event, we can, we can see this video, how this happens if you look close to the sun. Um, so a question here, what do you think, how large this, this loop was when it was ejected from the surface? How large, how large with respect to Earth, for example? So if I put the two in, in one picture, this is, the, this is the right scale. This was the loop came out, and this is the size of the Earth, the real size of the Earth in front of one loop that is coming out. Hundreds or millions of them, and this is one loop. And Every now and then, every sec single second, sun is doing it many times. We only care if it is ejected towards uh, the earth. Otherwise, 
it is going in the other direction, so we don't care. On August two, on October 2003, the, which I talked about in the first slide, everything gone out. Sun was so angry that it is doing it and so quickly that uh, these, these uh, storms are coming out every second, many of them. Finally, what, why, why we have to care about what happened after this, this is done? I mean, when the plasma is ejected, what happened next? So the, the thing is that it creates a wind just like a wind we have on Earth. If the wind is blowing in a normal way, we have the normal temperature and normal condition. But if the wind is blowing in a very fast way with more concentration, we have a storm like we have sandstorm here. We have solar storm in this space. So just for example, we, we can illustrate the whole thing in this video. This is the wind that is coming out from the sun and now it is going toward the earth. So ca can anybody tell uh, what is these, these blue, uh, these uh, indigo lines around the, around the earth? Van Allen. Van, uh, yeah, Van Allen Bell, yeah, definitely. But uh, what is these blue lines? The magnetic field. So we are normal, we, this is coming out towards us every day. But we are protected by, by Allah to, through this magnetic field. As long as the magnetic field is there, we are protected. If it is gone out, we cannot live on Earth. So when this, this, the, the wind pressure is there, some of the lines of forces, they, have, they are weakened. But they rejoin at the back side, and then the, 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 uh, the plasma, charged plasma, enter into the pole side, the North Pole and the South Pole. Yes, so in, 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 the, in the direct reaction, yeah, it stops. But if the pressure is too high, some of them that goes through. So you see, you see, it cannot. What do you mean by the lines getting disrupted or getting destroyed? Well, the, the, the plasma is charged plasma, and the lines are magnetic lines. So when they react, they weaken the lines of forces. So some of them, they just go away. Yes, exactly, along the lines of forces. So the lines of forces, these lines, the blue lines of forces are, are coming into the pole side. That's why the plasma is go, go around the lines of forces and enter the pole side. You see this glow? The, the, sorry? No, it enters into the earth. And that entrance then creates the ionosphere. Okay, so this plasma enters into the pole side through the lines of forces and then they create the ionosphere. So we are going towards uh, how the ionosphere is created. So for example, this is the whole picture. It's starting from deep inside the sun, everything is created by the fusion reaction of hydrogen and, and other gases. They create heat and light, and the magnetic field start uh, getting complicated. It needs escape, it escape, and creates these loops which eject the plasma from the surface of the sun. That plasma travel into the interplanetary space through solar wind. It interacts with magnetic field. It enters from the pole side by traveling through the, these lines of forces. So just to simplify everything, uh, sun creates solar wind. Solar wind interacts with Earth. It creates a region called ionosphere at the upper atmosphere is close to the Earth, which it has minimum electron density. If you try to know where this region is, try to just understand, we see that uh, ionosphere starts from uh, above the ozone layer. Ozone layer is about 50 kilometer above the Earth's surface. From there, this, the, we can find these charges, free charges, electron, and the positive charges available. Basically, all our rockets, all our satellites, all so, sort of our communication which we are sending into this space, low and high Earth orbit, they all are traveling in this region of ionosphere. The question is, why we have to care about this uh, at the end? So the first thing first is that uh, all our uh, aeroplane, 
ships on the sea and on any other terrestrial communication is going through the ionosphere. If ionosphere is weak, we have the weak communication. If ionosphere is strong, we have the different level of communication uh, from one body to another body on Earth. The sun is more active. When it is more angry, it is their solar storm. We have some extra layers and patches that are created. This, they stop our communication from one body to another on the Earth, if you want to communicate. At the other side, we have the communication satellite through which we watch our TV shows. So if the ionosphere is, is more active, the, the TV communication will be disturbed. We have a GPS satellite which are flying above the ionosphere. If ionosphere is more active, there are more disturbance. More disturbance means wrong positioning, wrong GPS usage uh, on Earth. So in short, whatever we launch in space, it it has to be communicated through ionosphere. So if ionosphere is disturbed, our communication with our satellite, our astronauts, and any other things in space will be disturbed. And how it is disturbed? When we have more solar storms created, the more disturbance in the ionosphere, and the more difficult for us to keep things going on Earth. Finally, there's a good side of the ionosphere being created. These are the northern lights. We can see these northern lights if you travel to the uh, Norway, Sweden, Canada. And uh, these northern lights are created when they are solar storm. So people are waiting for the solar storms to occur so that they can see these northern lights, which can be seen from space and also from Earth. So they are generally called aurora. They can, they can not only be visible from the North Pole, but also from the South Pole. Near the New Zealand site, if you go to the New Zealand and there's a solar storm, you can also see. Or if you have to go to Canada or Norway or Sweden or Greenland, Every, everywhere it is visible in the North Pole, or close the North. North and South, both. both. So at the end, to summarize everything from the sun to the earth, uh, I have this final, uh, final video to show, and this will summarize everything what I have talked about. On Arctic nights, the aurora often flames across the winter sky. What is it, and where does it come from? This is where the tale of the aurora starts. On the sun, a star of average size among billions of other stars in our Milky Way. The sun acts as an enormous power plant. The energy is created deep inside the core of the sun. Here the temperature is over 14 million degrees and the pressure so enormous that hydrogen atoms are squeezed together into another element, helium. This nuclear reaction releases energy. The light radiates outward from the core of the sun. In the outer layers, the heat moves to the surface in huge eddies called convection cells. These electrical currents of charged gas create magnetic fields inside the sun. In some places, strong magnetic fields push their way up through the surface. They slow down the eddies of hot gas. The surface cools and darker sunspots appear. The electrically charged gas is called plasma. The plasma drags the magnetic field further outwards. The magnetic field stretches and twists like a rubber band, and then the rubber band breaks. Several billion tons of plasma is hurled out from the sun. This is called a solar storm. The solar storm can reach speeds over 8 million kilometers an hour. After six hours, it blows past the planet Mercury. After 12 hours, the planet Venus.
13 hours, the solar storm reaches Earth. When the solar storm reaches our planet, something strange happens. An invisible shield, the Earth's magnetic field, deflects the storm. The magnetic fields couple together and create a funnel where the gas streams down on the daylight side of the pole. This is the daylight aurora. The magnetic fields stretch further back and couple together. The magnetic rubber band breaks and gas from the solar storm streams along the magnetic lines towards the poles on the night side. This is the nighttime aurora.